So Balanced View is a grassroots, um, a global grassroots organisation <coughs> of people who are really deeply interested in knowing themselves and deeply and passionately caring about the benefit of all. And um, for me personally, it's, um, it's quite fascinating to see the journey that has brought me here. Because when I came to this training, uh, my focus was very much on myself and all of my own experience. And uh, in the Balance View training, we have a very simple terminology that allows us to really to talk about our experience in a very simple way. And the terminology is that there is data, and data is a term that's used to refer to anything that you can describe. So any thought, emotion, physical sensation, any, anything you can experience or describe, we can simply call data. And all data is known by the same open intelligence. So whether you're feeling happy or sad, whether you're feeling angry or calm, whether you're on your own or whether you're with lots of people, all of those experiences are known by this same open intelligence. And it's this open intelligence that knows you're here right now. It's open intelligence that is hearing these words that you're hearing. So it's not something far off and mysterious, it's, it, it's very immediate and very accessible. And um, in the Balance View training, there is a, a completely unique support system that introduces you to this open intelligence and then provides a comprehensive support network to allow you to train up and to become confident in relying in, in and on your open intelligence. And this support network is the four mainstays. So the first of the mainstays is short moments. And a short moment is as simple as just relaxing your mind and your body for a moment and allowing all of the data just to be exactly as it is. Allowing your thoughts and emotions just to flow on by. And what I found was that when I did that, when I just remembered naturally just to relax this obsessive focus with um, describing everything that was going on and allowed everything to flow on by, then it gave me a space to notice the intelligence that included all of my experience. It gave me an opportunity to notice that although the content, the descriptions were always changing, the intelligence by which they were known it was always constant. It was always there. And so all I had to do was notice it. It, it, it wasn't difficult, it wasn't strenuous. And each time I remembered to relax, there it was, shining brightly. So all of the data shining forth from this open intelligence. And um, every time I checked in with this open intelligence, the, the, the results and the, the benefit were immediate. Because immediately I could really, for the first time in my life, see clearly everything that was going on for myself. And um, what I began to see was that I actually had the capacity to face everything about myself and everything that I thought and felt and experienced from a place of complete openness. And so previously when I'd taken all of the data to really be something that I had to, I had to focus on, I had to describe, I had to analyse, I had to work out, I had to sort into different categories of experience, you know, whether I liked something or whether I didn't. And, uh, all of that just naturally relaxed. And so the focus on data, the focus on only really seeing these descriptions and, and trying to desperately make something out of them so that I knew how to act in the world, so that I knew how to relate to, to other people and to myself, all of that just very gently relaxed. And as I relied more and more on this open intelligence, then to discover that I had the capacity to relate with an open heart and with warmth and in a way that was of immediate benefit was, um, for me, quite remarkable, really. I'd never imagined that my life could be lived that way. My life previously had been completely self-focused and although I'd been very well-intentioned in my life and you know, I wanted the best for myself and I wanted the best for other people, that the focus had been almost completely 
on what I was thinking, on what I was feeling, on what I was experiencing, on how it related to me. And as I relaxed with all of these descriptions and allowed them just to, to flow on by, then that obsessive self-focus just opened out more and more. And um, it was, uh, first of all, personally, uh, just a huge relief to see that I didn't have to make such a big deal about all of my completely unpredictable thoughts and emotions. To see that they were unpredictable, that I couldn't control them, but also that I didn't have to control them. That when I relaxed and I allowed myself just to feel everything from this place of complete openness and stability, there was this, this courage, if you like, to see that I really could face anything. You know, there wasn't anything that I had to be afraid of anymore, either ab about myself or about my experience in the world. And I began to see that so much of my relating had been based on my hopes and fears about what I could or, or couldn't handle experiencing. You know, so various thoughts and emotions that I really, I, 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 for me, were almost unbearable. You know, things like anger, things like embarrassment, things like um, shame, things like um, boredom or irritation or um, just this constant need to judge and criticise everything that was going on and to try and live my life based on all of these ideas about how things should be. And uh, so, so the shift that I saw really as I gently gained confidence in open intelligence was just to see more and more of this open-heartedness, this, this kindness towards myself. And once I saw that I could actually be kind towards myself, then very naturally I saw that I could relate to other people with a complete uncontrived kindness and compassion and, and a depth of understanding. Because I could see that the way that I had been relating to myself and the world was exactly the same for everybody else. You know, we all have our own unique experience, but the basic mechanism was exactly the same. And so the thoughts of, um, well, very commonly veering between the two of, of feeling incredibly superior feeling that, you know, I knew better than anybody else and people would say things and the thought would come up, oh, that's, you know, how can you be so stupid? And, and, and to the other extreme of, you know, just feeling, you know, like I didn't have a clue what was going on and I'd be listening to other people and they sounded, you know, they sounded happier than I did, they sounded more intelligent than I did, they sounded um, more experienced than I did and, and, and having to protect and defend this identity that I was desperately trying to create and you know, project into the world. And so all of that just relaxed. So naturally as I began to really see myself as I actually was, and that was this, this completely vast open intelligence that included all of these definitions but wasn't bound by any of them. And so when I relied on this open intelligence, then my relating didn't need to be bound by any of these definitions either. And um, the way that that came about was through the support of the Four Mainstays. So the practice of short moments is, is, is one of the mainstays. And then there are the trainings and training media. So the website is just full of, um, you know, it's just a, a huge treasure trove of, of incredible media. And it's incredible because all of it points unerringly exactly back to the nature of reality. And when I heard that, and I heard it again and again, then it just became more and more obvious. And when it was stated clearly and directly, then it was undeniable, it was so obvious, it was, well of course, you know, how could it be any other way? And um, then the third mainstay is the community. And it's amazing really to see the community spreading and growing around the world in such a natural way. Because when people hear this about themselves, when they hear about their fundamental nature, about their capacity to live a life that is empowered and is lived for the benefit of all, then people are interested. I was interested when I heard that. I wanted to find out more. But um, my life experience had led me to be suspicious, to be mistrustful. You know, I couldn't trust myself, so how could I trust anybody else? 
And, and so I approached this training um, very gradually and, and I checked it out and I came to open meetings and I listened to talks and, um, and I sat in the back of the open meeting for a while but everything I heard was completely consistent. There was nothing being asked of me. All I had to do was just continue to show up if that's what I wanted to do. And by doing that, the results that were talked about became more and more obvious very directly in my own life and very practically in my own relationships. You know, the, the knee-jerk reactivity just got less and less and less. The ability to make clear beneficial decisions just increased. The ease with which I could approach all situations in my life just became more and more obvious. As, as the data, the descriptions lost their, their grip over me. You know, all of these stories that I've been telling myself about you know, I, I can't feel anger, I shouldn't feel anger, I mustn't feel embarrassed. They, they just settle down until they're, they're not really noticed so longer. And um, it's interesting when something like anger comes up now and the data remain completely unpredictable. So there can be a sudden rush of energy and you know, this, this flash of anger if you like, but what happens now is that it's, it's, it's gone before it's even really noticed. There's no way to hold on to your present moment experience. And as you get more confidence in open intelligence, then that just becomes more and more obvious. So the more relaxed you are, the more, more keenly you notice this, um, this natural flow of experience. There's no need to try and fix it in place or to alter it in any way. Everything becomes a, an expression of this benefit and every experience becomes a, an opportunity to express this benefit. You know, to use our, our potency, to use our speech, to use our mind, to use our qualities and activities in a way that will be of benefit to ourselves and everybody else. How amazing is that? You know, that's what I'd always wanted. But then the support of the mainstays were essential particularly when things seemed really challenging, when I couldn't relax and allow everything to be as it was, the, the support of a trainer. There's somebody that will just guide you very gently to show you basically how incredible you've always been, to show you that you can learn and, to tra to, and, learn and can train up in the power of your own mind, to educate yourself in the nature of your own mind. And that is all-inclusive. As I said at the beginning, everything is included within this vast expanse of intelligence. So the benefits are felt in all aspects of our life, in all relationships. There's nothing that's somehow apart from or not included within this expanse. So it's really incredible to begin to see this about yourself. For me, that was amazing. I'd never imagined that my life could be a life that could be lived for benefit. My life had seemed so small and limited and narrow and through really seeing the results of what happens when I did rely on the mainstays then, well, it was so obvious for me to make the decision to continue relying on the mainstays. It wasn't something that I had to believe in, it was something I could test out. And I tested out not relying on the four mainstays and taking advantage of the support and I tested out relying on the mainstays. And you know, I could make my life really difficult and, and make everything a, a huge struggle and have a really hard time, or I could have a great life and enjoy everything, feel more and more relaxed, more and more potent, and more and more connected with everybody around the world. Okay, I think I know which option I'm going to go for there. But it was great. I could, I could take my time and test it out and, you know, see what, what was there for me. And, and that's the invitation. You know, take some time to, to check out the, the talks on the website. You know, take some time you know, to be around other people in the, in the community that are committed to this, this, this simple choice in the way that we use our minds. And it's so powerful when you're around other people. You know, they're simply reflecting to you your own brilliance and your own clarity and your own deeply peaceful nature. And the, the fire of the anger and the fire of the frustration that I feel with what I see going on around me in the world is, is my fuel to really, to really take responsibility for me and my life and to take responsibility for 
seeing how I can be of benefit, seeing how I can, what difference can I make? The shift from being completely helpless to feeling empowered and inspired to make a difference. That's actually, for me, the most important, the most radical shift. I'm fundamentally okay, so okay, you know, what can I do to share what I have to offer with the world? And to discover that I have a support network that empowers me to discover those things about myself. And yeah, for that, my, my gratitude and appreciation um, just continues to increase.